The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS licence nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. Are you having conversations with clients about retirement? Are they asking how much money they'll need? Are they worried they'll run out? We're proud to introduce the new North Retirement Space on Ensemble, featuring Q&As with economists, webinars with product innovators, and unfettered access to retirement specialists to support your advice. Join the conversation today with North, a better way for retirement. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I've got the pleasure of speaking with uh, a couple of people in my team, uh, Paul Cupic, Joel Gleeson, both from First Financial, both now financial advisors. Uh, if anyone's a, a long-term listener of the podcast, Joel was on a little while ago in episode 401. We were talking about how it was like uh, for him going through the professional year. Joel's now an advisor, so I thought I would revisit it and get Paul along to help because Paul was a big influence in Joel becoming an advisor. So thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. So, Joel, let's start with you. How long have you been an advisor? When did you get your uh, your golden ticket? Yeah, so that came along uh, end of October, sort of start of November. I fear for the listeners that might have heard the the other one. I think it was around June last year, but changed for for me. Got got married and then had a little bit of a honeymoon, so came back from that, and and that's when the transition came along. So um, be, been in the role now um, since yeah, about start of November. Good stuff. And Paul, hey, can you recall? I should have. Uh, prepped you with this. Can you recall how long Joel's been working with you for? I think it's been about two and a half years, two, two and a half years, I'd say, when we joined forces. Yep. And Paul, maybe a little bit about who you are and what you do in the in the business. So I've been at the business for about three and a half years now. Um, I joined as an advisor, I think from one of your LinkedIn posts. Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I said about three and a half years ago. And just have been working along since. Yep, yep. And uh, and Joel, did you? Was Joel with you at the beginning? No, he wasn't with you at the beginning. Were you, were you on your own in the beginning? Yeah. At the start, I said I was on my own as kind of while I was finding my feet. Yeah. And then as things progressed, obviously Joel joined, and then I said that's probably been about two two and a half years there. Yep, yep. And so I wanted to get the two of you on because there's a lot of. And it's, it's still, as much as the professional year's been around for a while, I, I still get the sense that there's a few either uh, professional year candidates struggling with going through it. There's you know, the advisor or the support on the other side from the business struggling with how to how to make it work. And I just wanted the two of you to just share what you did. Um, maybe Paul, if we go back to back to you, can you talk a little bit about the structure of what you and Joel did for a year or so whilst whilst Joel was going through that? Yeah, so I guess we kind of just followed the professional year plan quarter by quarter naturally anyway, but then Joel had to start documenting it. Um, so it started off very baseline, you know, preparing for reviews and things like that, um, you know, helping work, you know, put together strategies and things. However, as time progressed, Joel would become more and more involved in the meetings. He'd present a little bit and most of it. And then towards the end, I'd be sitting there kind of, not saying a word for an entire meeting for you know particular clients that, that would be comfortable with that. Uh, that obviously couples up with things like you know strategy writing, document requests, you know so on and so forth. Yep. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about feedback? Like I know you were really helpful, I guess. In you know you've you've shared with me and, and both and Joel shared with me as well. Like how how you dealt with feedback in those in those meetings. Joel presents something in the advice, whether he runs the whole you know client meeting or, or only part of it. But I know you were really specific with feedback during those meetings. Can you talk about what you were doing? Yeah. So uh, pretty much after every single meeting, when the client left the room, I would the notes I would be taking wouldn't be so much about the meeting itself. It would be about like things I noticed about Joel. Oh, yeah. Um, when like we started, for example, it was a lot more high-level 
general comments, you know, ways to talk to clients, explain things, you know, slow down, don't say as much, things like that. However, I guess as we progressed and Joel became more confident and, and confident, yeah, we probably then got into more nitty gritty little things that, I don't know, things that I thought, you know, could be changed or improved for whatever reason. And then usually in the next meeting, you know, that little thing might be changed or something like that. Joel, can you talk about the, the, the feedback that you were receiving through each of those meetings, like good, bad or otherwise? Like Paul's in front of you, so you're probably going to say it was crap. But but like, but like you know, the changes you made, was that valuable, that kind of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, from the way I started at the beginning, uh, it's just basic pre- presentations type things, like making sure that I wasn't speaking too fast or – um, you know, waffling on too much or just trying to fill in blank space in the, in a meeting. Um, that's where it probably started. And then at the end, it sort of got to a point where, you know, ultimately I think our role is making people feel confident in what they're doing. So, you know, getting to the point where, you know, you're rounding out a discussion by sort of, you know, making sure that you're, you're making the client aware that they, you know, everything we're doing is working as it should um they're, they're they're in a good position uh there's nothing to be worried about just making sure that they felt comfortable at the end like it's a it's just an emotion thing that that you sort of pick up on is, is how we can help people and give them that um confidence and clarity yeah um, and that's where i think i've got to be better towards the end uh, of, the, of the process yeah and, and you you know you're getting close to six months or so now since you were promoted to be an advisor and you've obviously completed the, the professional year how have you found the first six months of of advisor life? Yeah, it's been it's been interesting, absolutely. So uh, I'd say it's two prong. Like, firstly, whilst it's great having another person in the room, and if I was really struggling through the PY year, there was always sort of an advisor there to to help out if if def- if needed. But at the same time, it can create uh, you know maybe a bit more anxiety about talking because you sort of. You've got the client in the room, but you've also got the advisor in the room. So you're sort of playing this dilemma in your head about sort of you want to explain things in detail, but you also want to make sure that it's client friendly as well. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit interesting throughout that process. And then once you sort of step in by yourself, um, there isn't that sort of other advisor element to it. So you just sort of perhaps speak maybe a little bit more, you know, confidently and a little bit more just, you know, in a way that you think is appropriate just for that one audience that's in the room, which is the client. Yep. Um, so yeah, it, there's there's pros and cons in both. I'd say yeah. Yep. And 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 Paul, you we I don't know because the way that we operate and different businesses have been a little bit differently. When someone like Joel's promoted to be an advisor, we generally look to transition some of clients across to 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 Joel. How do you feel that's gone for the clients? So far, it's gone pretty well. I would suggest. Yeah. Um, the clients that we picked. So Joel's obviously been around the company a little bit longer than me um, as an associate to a previous advisor who I've kind of taken care of a, a lot of those clients now. So we kind of really handpicked particular clients that knew Joel and spoke to Joel a lot and were very comfortable with him first and foremost. And probably when the professional year started, we actually earmarked a number of clients that we suggested would go to Joel in the year's time. Yeah. And we really made sure that... um you know, Joel had the most con- more contact with them than me kind of throughout that process. So he was absolutely running the meetings, booking them, implementing advice, whatever it may be, just so they were comfortable with the transition. And I've made quite a few phone calls to clients before meetings to kind of explain the situation and that Joel will probably be taking over. And I have had pretty much zero pushback whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, how, how are you managing that conversation of Joel's a new advisor, I'm not? Like, how, how are you dealing with that bit? I'm just very kind of upfront and honest and I, I, I kind of go down the path that, you know, Joel's recently been made an advisor and, and as part of that process, he needs to start taking care of his clients of his own. Um, I remind the clients they've known him for, you know, quite a long time and they should be happy and comfortable to, to have a meeting with him. Um, I always offer to either jump in to the meeting or for them to call me after the fact um, if there is any issues or questions or they need a second opinion, whatever it may be. So I make sure that they know that I am still available. I'm not just, you know, dropping off the face of the earth. Yeah. And so that's worked really well. I don't think there's been any phone calls after the fact, so we'll definitely keep doing it this way. Yep, yep, fantastic. And, and Joel, what do you think has been the the biggest challenge for you uh, in, yeah, becoming an advisor on your own? As you said, you don't have that second person in the room anymore. What, what's been the biggest challenge for you? Yeah, 
Oh, just before I go into that, I'll just extend on what Paul said about mm. the, the transition period. I think that one of the benefits that I had in the field is anyone I was giving advice to in my situation would be to, as an associate, if you can call clients as much as possible instead of going down an email route, like for instance, book a meeting, give them a call instead of sending out an email to, to book in. They just get a bit of a, you know, hear your voice and put a put a name to that voice. And then at the point in which you sort of transition along, they're familiar with me. Um, and I think that's that's helped quite a bit. So Yeah. Um, it's just that it's just increasing the touch points, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um in terms of uh challenges in the process, yeah, look, I, I found Probably the more challenging process is the the new client piece. Mm. So you know, doing review meetings with clients is an agenda that we we run through at first financial, um, and there's always sort of that to refer back to. Um, whereas in the the new client process, as you two would be aware, it can really spawn off into multiple different areas that you may not necessarily be prepared for prior to seeing that person. Um, so that's been um, a big sort of area. Of, development uh, of you know I've spoken to James and Paul uh, uh, quite a few times about this but I feel like you know since I've started that's been a massive um, learning curve um, and I'm yeah slowly getting better at, at that process and, and now I feel like I've got a bit of a you know call and maybe even an agenda that I, myself that I can sort of go to in an initial meeting and make them flow and make them uh, feel like you know clients are getting something out of it and it's a good discussion. And can you elaborate a little bit more on your your process that you've developed to, that's working for you? Yeah, look, the big thing is trying to get you know at least a pre appointment questionnaire completed by the client prior to the meeting. So I've got a little bit of information about them, and I've got a bit of an idea of where I think it can go. And then from there, I've been preparing a, a short presentation which I can sort of refer back to. So I'm actually just doing one at the moment for for someone I'm, I'm about to meet, mm. um, and I sort of try to base it off. What I call the, the sort of the five pillars of finance, which is something I've stolen uh, from you, James. Oh, I'll like that. Use that to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I use that as a, as an area that really sort of you know it's just a starting position. You know what what is your surplus cash flow? You know, what is your debt position? What's the plan to sort of retire that? Um, what do you think your retirement income needs are going to be? Um, are we doing the right things today to get there? If not, where do we need to pivot? Think you know, things like that. Um, is my process, um, and I've felt like it's 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 working well. Now, yeah, yep. And so, is you so that uh, uh, presentation of sorts that you're referencing? Are you doing that with the client in their first meeting, or is that a second meeting? You're doing that? Like when are you when are you bringing out this presentation? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it in the first one, um, yep. and then from the first one, there may be sort of you know different areas that we want to focus on more, and in the second meeting, I'll, I'll tailor that again. So. Yeah, these are some of the things we discussed in the first meeting. I want to go in a little bit more detail about this, and this is some of the ideas. This is where my mind is going. What do you think about this, et cetera? And um, I find it it flows really well, um, and ultimately the client feels like they're sort of I'm, I'm hearing what's important to them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's how it's been working well for me. Fantastic. And then what what comes next? Like, is there is there more meetings? Like, when are you presenting advice in that in that process? Yeah, look, I, I always say to the clients when I meet with them, it's probably anywhere between sort of one to three meetings before there's a point in which they're committing to a plan. So I make that yep. clear to them and I feel like that sets that expectation. They're not going to get it sort of advice in that first couple of meetings. Sure. Um, and th- then from there, then part of our process is you know, getting to a point where I've got a, a fact find, which is their client profile and exactly – the current position, what they want to achieve, goals and objectives, because ultimately they will filter back to what the recommendations are made and then go ahead preparing the plan. Yep. Uh, Paul, can you maybe talk a little bit about the kind of the coaching and mentoring that's going on after the PY? Like I think probably all three of us, and it's, the, it's the first time we've all three of us have helped someone through PY. Maybe naively we thought once the PY is done, it's done, but we've all realized it's not. What are you well, like what are you what are you guys doing after the fact? Yeah, I mean, maybe we did kind of think there'd be a, a you know D day and we'd split off forever and 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 that would be it. But that's definitely kind of not the case, especially as Joel's kind of been going through, like you know the first time he's having a first meeting, second and third, you know we're kind of talking about you know discussion points or ideas or potential strategies and stuff like that. So there's always there's still like you know, back and forth between us like there was before. 
So you know, that definitely hasn't stopped. I would assume as time goes on, that'll um, probably reduce over time. Yeah. But as I said, it's it's still worth knowing that there's either myself or you or a bunch of other advisors to bounce ideas off and talk through things and all that kind of stuff to, to make the transition, I guess, as, as seamless as possible. Yeah. And are you still having your monthly catch-up like Joel and I do? Do you, do you guys still have your monthly catch-ups or not? We, we have it for some, for some time. Uh, yeah. I guess probably since the transition happened. Yeah, um, probably not necessary. Okay. Probably not necessary to yeah. do it. But it, informally, maybe. Um, hmm. Obviously, I still feel it. like we we catch up just and chat over things regularly. Uh, yeah, but maybe not not something in the calendar, so to speak. You know, what, and I guess what that is, if if maybe I explain a little bit what I'm talking about. Obviously, you know, you, you two guys know, but like we have our it's kind of our review uh, and a performance review type schedule. There's the six monthly six monthly kind of review schedule, but we also have monthly check ins and and so like Joel, for example, you're you know, you're quite regimented with you've got you've set yourself some goals, whatever they might be, and you're kind of referencing back to them every month. It's like, okay, this one's this one's done now or I'm progressing well on this, I'm stuck here, I'm stuck there. And if you have achieved whatever that goal is, you're kind of coming up with what's the next one. So you so you're kind of constantly looking forward. I know that the two of you used to do that that meeting. It, it stopped there, which is fine. But with Joel, you kind of have that 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 catch up with me, and that's more. I don't know. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm adding a whole lot to it. But it's it's just making you stop and look at what you've achieved, what have you got planned next, and continuing to work towards it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that, it's still out. to answer that. I'm sorry, probably doing that a little bit with. More with you now, James. Yep. So we meet on a monthly basis and I've sort of identified a couple of areas that I want to improve in um, and it's now sort of shifted where it was probably more associate PYU focused things to now it's about, all right, now I'm getting my own clients, you know, what are, what are important, you know, goals and things that I need to do now that that's happening here. Yeah. Yep, yep. And Paul, what, is it, what does it mean for you now as an advisor that Joel's moved on to be an advisor himself. What what happens with with you now? So since Joel's left, I've uh, picked up a new associate named James. Obviously not yourself, um, <laughs> uh, who joined. I guess me probably a couple months ago now. Mm. Um, so it's a it's definitely a little bit of a transition going from someone who you worked with for two and a half years that you know you didn't have to really speak and like the work would just kind of happen to having someone that you know isn't familiar with our. our processes and procedures and things like that so again it's a it's a team effort you know getting james up to speed who absolutely is now and joel's probably paid played a really large part in that um you know training him on a lot of the associate advisor kind of work at first financial um i actually sat down with james just the other day to to kind of start setting his goals for our, our monthly catch-ups and i kind of said a, a big goal i think for you should be in about two or three years time I want you to almost like resent me because you should be able to do every single thing that I do bar the meeting. And I think like that, that's what we kind of set at his long-term goal, but then obviously, you know, shorter and medium-term ones as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a good a good kind of aspiration to have to to make you redundant. Like in, in a sense, kind of Joel got to there and then he's let loose and he's, and he's on his own and then and then someone else comes comes through. But yeah, that's a, it's an interesting... You've, you've obviously shared with me outside of the podcast, but having to, you know, you've had Joel that's been fairly senior in that associate advisor role, has done it for a while, can do SOA requests, you know, can deal with the strategy and so forth. To then you go back to having someone that's earlier on in their their career path. They'll get to that same point, but but it's a different, yeah, uh, it, it's a it's a change for you. There's certain things I suspect that you've probably had to pick up now that you just used to take for granted that Joel just did for you. Yeah, so I've had to go back and learn like lots of little things that again I just never had to think about because Joel always did it. But um, yeah, that's all part of it. And you know, again, James will pick that up quickly as well, and you know, we'll just kind of keep progressing together. Mm. Joel, can you maybe just talk about the transition of the associate advisor type responsibilities from from you on to someone else? How you how you guys dealt with that? Yeah, look, from like an organisation perspective, I had my own process where we sort of you know ran a, a trolley ball at me and Paul about what was sort of ongoing and and he's adopted his own um, sort of method that James has now. And then, yeah, in terms of the role for, from an associate's perspective, it's really based around, I find it's 
sort of review centric. So whenever a review is, there's work to be done pre and post that. Yep. Um, so for the here, it's about making sure that sort of it keeps his sort of, you know, calendar in check and is able to manage his workflow in, in that way. Um, and, and then there, it's just a matter of probably doing some, um, things that he is not all that familiar with. But I, I found once we were going through a, a term deposit style, uh, spreadsheet, which I had different, um, term deposits are about to mature. I said, part of the role is now you sort of have a bit of a think what should happen with this and provide some help to Paul. And, and he, so he got the term deposit list open. He was, wasn't too sure what to say, like what to write as like a guidance. And like, this is where you sort of need a shift in mindset. It's try to think as an advisor a little bit, like what do you think should be happening here? Yeah. Instead of maybe being uh, more like a process driven as, as a CSM type role, it's just try, put your advisor hat on a bit more um, and uh, and try help the advisor in that way. And that's where you, you'll add value to him and, and, and learn yourself. Mm. So Joel, what are your plans for the, Next six months or so, what have you set yourself as goals? What are you What are you hoping to try and do? Yeah, so um, to begin with, as you know, there's a process where we're transitioning clients across. So I want to make sure we get to a point, you know, in six to twelve months' time when that's that's all complete. Uh, so that's really one of the, one of the big ones um, at the moment. And then the next one is really trying to to build my own clients. So trying to do as many sort of initial phone calls with, with clients that come through, um, do as, as many sort of initial meetings as well um, to basically just build up those skills but ultimately try to get some results where we, we um, get some clients of my own. So that's really the, the big one um, at the moment, the one I'm focusing on a yep. lot. Yep. And Paul, what about you? Um, I guess for the foreseeable future, it's really just making sure James is you know up to speed and like Joel said, starting to think like an advisor. So just training them on, you know, goal writing strategies, all that kind of stuff, the more, I guess, associate advisor tasks, mm. which will obviously be a while. And then obviously it's ma- managing the transition of, you know, a chunk of my clients over to Joel, making sure that's done smoothly or goes well, timely matter. And then as Joel said, I guess trying to you know, build up my own client base and, and, and go again. Yep. Do you enjoy, like, do you enjoy that? part the the new client bit and the and the training someone how to do the job do you do you enjoy that or do you prefer the hey i've got my clients and i'm just looking after them it's it's the i think finding or you know getting new clients is the fun part um yep. so yeah absolutely enjoy that yep fantastic any other tips that either of you could share with anyone that's you know halfway through their py joel coming out the other end like Anything else you can think of that, like, well, maybe run this a different way. If you did it again, would you do something different? Mm, my, yeah, I've spoken about the one piece of advice I had was about, you know, calling clients as much as possible to study that familiarity. But um, the other big thing that I think worked well for me and, and about feedback is whenever I did a, a review or had a client meeting, the feedback I would get, I'd sort of try to work on that for the next one. Um, so, I think that was a really big thing. So I'd encourage people that were an advisor and a person doing the PY year is to, when the feedback comes, you know, take it on board and use that as like notes for your next one. So to, to work on that and, you know, if there was something that you weren't doing quite right, then you sort of don't make the same mistake twice. That would be probably my big bit of guidance for people that were doing the PY year. So try to talk to as many clients as possible because they ultimately may become yours. Um, and then when you get some feedback, yeah, just try and you know work on that for the next one. Yeah, Paul, what about you? Would you do anything different the next time around? No, I think we did it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, just on that though, I guess if you're the advisor giving the feedback, especially at the start, like you know, the, the first meeting, you know, you weren't going to too much detail or, or nitpicking little things, it you start off really high a level and ask because you don't want to you know, scare the associate off from ever wanting to talk to a client again. I said, it's, you really want to progress into, I guess, more detail or into things or things that you think could be better. You've got to kind of make sure you manage that in a, you know, a, a nice way to communicate that. Yeah. It's like you're kind of making the point about it being really, really supportive feedback. You don't want to okay. dampen, their, dampen their enthusiasm. It says, yeah, how, how can you improve for next time? Yeah. I, I think even from like when we started, 
the professional year, you know, so we had Joel kind of do the same part of the review agenda, you know, a few times to get that down pat. And then we added more and more and more. Um, so I think, yeah, like Joel said, repetition's important, talking as much as you can, and then just kind of building on that. Cause really it's, it's mostly confidence. I, I, I would say. Yep. And I, like, I, I think you both did a tremendous job of it too. Like, you know, the success is in Joel and uh, he's six months into being an advisor, but doing really well. He's, he's doing all the things that we would expect him to be doing six months in. And, and you know, that, that's credit to both of you, Paul, for, you know, you for the, the support and, and so forth in, in helping Joel together and Joel for you to taking that support and feedback on board and, and improving to, to getting where you got to. So congratulations to both of you. Good to have you back on Joel and, uh, and, and share your journey six months or so into being an advisor. Maybe we'll get you back uh, in, in another year, in another year and invite some, provide some more, uh, more feedback on how you're going. Sounds good. Thanks guys. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.